Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode number 19. Yes, 19 of the Think Like a Marketer show, where we interview marketers, entrepreneurs, and innovators and find out exactly why they think so differently, everyone else, and kind of get some tips, tricks, and techniques and mindset changes and what made them so successful at what they do. So today, we're going to talk about how to live your best life with no regrets after 50. Uh, you know, my father, uh, worked his whole life in a in a job I'm pretty certain he did not like, but he did it because he was a provider for the family. Uh, and I remember uh, there was a time in the early 80s uh, when the oil business wasn't doing good. My mom, she was in the banking business temporarily and it wasn't doing well. And he used to fuel planes. So he was doing two jobs. He would come home, eat and then go fuel planes, come home at midnight, get back up at five in the morning and do it all over again. And I can't remember a time my dad ever complaining about work. Now, I do remember a time him complaining about me not doing my chores and my part in the family, uh, which, by the way, was a lot. You know, but he had a list. Right. And, you know, now my dad is seven, 71 and he's living his, his second hour of his life, the best part of his life, um, doing what he actually wanted to do his whole life, which was fixing up old cars. And consequently, he actually makes more money now doing what he loves than he did ever in his whole life doing stuff that he did not like. So I wanted to do a topic on that because you see in our economy right now, um, unemployment, unemployment is the lowest it's been in 50 plus years. And you see even a lower unemployment for uh, people who are 55 and, and older so because because of the job shortage, uh, you know, corporations and, and smaller businesses are taking a look at people that they used to not take a look at. And that was people who actually have experience in life <laughs> and taking a chance on them and finding out, wow, these people actually have a lot. And then it benefit both people. And you find that when someone gets to that hour of their life, you know, I'm 49, be 50 next year. Um, when they get to that part of their life, they like, OK, look, I've done the, the, the stuff I didn't want to do. If I take any role, any job, anything that I'm going to do, it's going to be what I like. So today's guest is going to be talking about just that very thing. She was she was and still is a, a worldwide world renowned dance instructor, been in the business for 35 plus years, won every award that you could possibly win. Um, and had and raised two sons in the process of doing that that are talented in their own right. And and she even has a son, I think, uh, recently won in a, a dance world competition. And he's I think every time that he's ever entered with his team that he they've won first place, never felt the loss. <laughs> so I want to bring to you someone that I look up to as a, as a female and someone that I look up to for you know inspiration you know because it's difficult being a mom it is very difficult being a mom my friend tony rodriguez hey how are hey. you <laughs> i'm great <laughs> wow, no, no, that, was that was a nice introduction oh, thank you yeah. i appreciate that i appreciate well, that total disclaimer for everyone tony and i actually know each other very 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 well yeah so um yeah. so we're going to try to keep it where the audience, yeah, we could, we could be very entertaining if we wanted to be. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. But, um, you know, to, uh, uh, and I know that was a long intro. You you happen to know a lot more about my family. My you know my mom recently being uh, passing away, mm -hmm. uh, leaving my dad to you know, basically fend for himself. <laughs> right. Yes, he, he has his kids, but um, I want to talk yeah. about this. I want to because. I didn't want to make it just about females, you know, because I think okay. a lot of people watch this and they say, oh, yeah, but it's or is, is this only for females? So I kind of wanted to talk. That's why I opened up with, you know, my dad, he, he did exactly the same thing when he retired. He was retired at 55 and he's like, well, I, don't, I want to do something else. I mean, he still had a lot of life left in him. Sure. Sure. So, so, okay. Go ahead. I, want, I just want to start off with kind of give us, the, you know, the from the your yeah the the basic opener like you started out and you know okay so and stuff sure 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 <clears throat> so I have 
35 plus years, as Randall mentioned, in the competitive dance industry. I've been teaching competitive dance since I was 16. Um, at the age of 17 or 18, can't quite remember, um, entered my first beauty pageant as Miss Harris County. And I, and I won, and I won wearing Cesar Galindo, by the way, who's one of the main uh, designers for Runway Houston tomorrow. Um, he actually was a friend of a friend and he actually made my first gown I ever competed in. And I did it to make money to go to college because back in the day, that was the norm. That's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to get educated and go to college. You're never going to be anything unless you're educated. So what I found through years of, um, I was pretty successful in the beauty pageant industry, went on to be second runner up. And then I went on to train my little sister who was first runner up to Miss Texas USA. So I worked for Alan Gail Clark, um, very popular. Um, we, we don't have Al anymore, but um, very popular beauty pageant uh, people very prominent people. So I had the absolute wonderful opportunity to work with fashion designers, the best interview coaches, um, Toastmasters, Dale Carnegie. I mean, I did it all, but still continuing to follow my passion, which was dance. I know my parents probably wanted me to be an attorney because I do like to argue a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that my parents were like, what? you should, you should have been an attorney. A, let me take a so sip I on that the one. last word in and I want to win. <laughs> I'm very competitive. Mm -hmm. So um, so what happened, Randall, basically, and you know this, but I, I want to share this with your audience. Um, I was approaching quickly my 50th birthday and um, still teaching dance, love it, but really felt, um, felt like I needed to add depth to my life. And I think what happens when you reach your late 40s, early 50s, you begin to look at yourself from the inside out. Um, and that is kind of the premise of how I live my life now. I really want to feel good inside, not just about me, but feel good inside about every single thing that I do, every aspect of my life, whether it's work, whether it's health, whether it's raising my children. I just want to feel good all the time. Why? Because I have the knowledge now and I have the capacity and the wherewithal to do that. And I think we're, we raise our kids and we're raised in the idea of, working from the outside in, like you go get your degree and you put in your hours and you work 20 hours a day and you work hard, hard, hard. And if you don't, you're not going to amount to anything. And I think that you reach a burnout point. I don't want to call it midlife crisis. I don't believe in that. I call it like a midlife, like amazing time because again, you're knowledgeable. You've learned, you've maybe taken some wrong roads, maybe made some bad decisions. I mean, nobody's perfect, right? But I think it, it just, for me, it happened that I realized um, I want to sell real estate. Right. Something I've always wanted to do. Um, I want to get in front of a camera. It's always been very easy for me and, and natural for me. And then I met you and we were doing um, selling stretch videos online. And hey, Fred, how are you? Can I comment on your show like that? You sure That's can. Already. Hey, so one thing with that, right. with your, with your beautiful hair, it rubs mm -hmm. against that microphone. Oh, let me move it. There you go. Okay. Got it. Was that killing you? No, no, no. <laughs> I just know that you'll go back and watch this and go, oh my God, why didn't you tell me that? Okay. <laughs> so I told you. Okay. So let me check. Okay. Let me check that off. <laughs> check. <laughs> so where I'm at now, um, I started. Seven months ago, I didn't have a laptop. I had no social media platforms. I just came into this, you know, amazing person, Randall, who just kind of mentored me and exposed a lot of different alternatives for me to supplement my income. And I, like many of you out there, was very skeptical. I was like, really? No. And he started showing me YouTubers. And I was like, are you serious? People pay that person money to like, whisper and put people to sleep and you know review toys and make slime and I was like what there's something you know? for everyone yeah so here I am uh, five months later uh, with bubble talk my face my weekly Facebook live show which I adore and love and have had the opportunity to work with so many groups so many people get to work with people like Randall Chestnut and Freddie Gorgeous out there with LinkedIn I mean, I just, I've been able at this point in my life to really get rid, and we can talk about this in a second, but get rid of all the negative, all the drama, everything that kind of sucks all of the life out of you and really focus in on what really, truly makes you happy. Yeah. You know, um, 
first off, I was just looking at my list here. Now you had agreed to say amazing that Randall was amazing five times. You've only yes. said it three times, so okay. you're still have too short. Okay. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> um, so I wanted to you know, reiterate. So eight up to eight months ago, first off, you were top in top of the game in dance. Yes. I'm assuming that in dance, you don't necessarily need to have a lot of technical experience when it comes to computers. Now, if you're having a business, I think you know, that's different, but actually training someone, uh, you know, in, in that business, you don't have to have a computer no, knowledge at all. Yeah. You just have to have a phone to call someone. And say that. So, uh, and your social media was pretty much nothing eight months ago. And, uh, and when we met and you talked about, you could just see that you were at a part where like, okay, I'm done with this and I need to, I'm, I need to move on to something that's more meaningful. Like you put it, you know, start, start looking from your inside and you found like, you know, I just really enjoy doing this. And from that, your stretch, your lifestyle, a mindset was born. I want to, I want you to you know, kind of give an idea of where you came up with stretch your, stretch your lifestyle. Like really, what was that? What do you mean by that? Well, when I was in my 30s, I started noticing that people around me in their 30s and 40s were changing, really changing fast in their mindset, like how they thought. They started talking about retirement and they started talking about like, oh, 40s over the hill. And I just, I felt like I was really, really different and my mindset that I felt youthful. I've always felt very youthful. I've always had a youthful disposition. I don't know if it's from years of training dancers or, but I felt like what's, why can't, you should not wear your hair long. You should not wear clothes like that. You should, where does it say that I shouldn't act and feel and be youthful? Like, I, I don't understand it. So, and I would meet people that I went to high school with and I was like, whoa, Wow. Right. They look different. They act different. They're just like, oh, yeah, we, you know, we don't go out much. And, you know, we're just, no, we got the kiddos. And I'm like, I'm raising two boys. They go with me. I take them when I travel. I take them everywhere. I know you take Z wherever you go. Like, what, where does it say because you're married or because you have children or because you're reaching your 40s or 50s or that 60s. you should just like, turn in the towel, like, mm, yeah. you're done, you know, so I came up with the idea of stretching your lifestyle beyond its boundaries in everything from your mindset to your phys physicality, to your fitness, to your eating. It's not too late to invest in you. I know people right now at 50 who are deciding to change, which right. I think is amazing. So I realized that my calling was to inspire people inspire dancers to be champions, inspire friends and colleagues and family members to be healthy, inspire single moms out there to supplement their income by getting in front of the camera, inspiring myself to be, oops, sorry, keep hitting that mic, inspiring myself to be an entrepreneur. And now I have two or three businesses that I've started just in the last two or three months. Right. And, and, and I'm monetizing with my Facebook live show, um, thanks to Be Live. I mean, it, the sky just opened up. Like I really believe when you put that positive energy out there every single day and inspire people, stuff just starts coming to you. Like I used right. to have to like look for stuff on the internet. Now I have people reaching out to me daily. Like we want you to speak at this event. We want you to help our girls get camera ready. We want you to come to our organization and you know give facilitate a class on how to put together a Facebook live show and. Like things are just opportunities are coming. And, right. and I, I mean, really believe it's the mindset. Yeah, I know there's a couple on the horizon that are really big that you you haven't inked the deal, but you've talked to a couple of brand ambassadors. You already have, um, what was it, 45 days in, a check for 2,400 bucks. Yes. Like who would have thought? But I wanted to say something because the mindset is the most important thing. Because I, you know, I say this, that from your thoughts are everything. Because from your thoughts, your thoughts create feelings and your feelings create a reaction and your reaction creates some sort of result. Um, so if you want to change your result, obviously you change your thought or what you, like what you're pointing out is your mindset. So I read an article, uh, Sue Langer, she was a she's a professor. I don't know if she still is or not at Harvard mm -hmm. University. I uh, will point out that Harvard University is a very, very, very liberal university. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, so they did a study. They took uh, people who were 80, I think it was 80 years or older, and they put them in a room and they said, hey, so we want you to imagine that it's 19, I think it was 60, 61. It was during the, when Kennedy was running against uh, Nixon. And he said, I want you, because it took them back to where they would be like in their 30s or something like that. Okay. And we want you to, um, oh, so let me back up. So before they did this, they measured everything they could measure with that person. Like what was their walk, their gait, you know, looking at their face, their skin. They tested their blood, their oxygen levels, everything that they could test. Right. So they could do a before and an after. Mm -hmm. And I think it was like eight people that they went through this. And they told them, you're going to live in a home and that home is going to be decorated. The television is going to look like a, a television from the 61. Every, the magazines, everything in the home inside of it, you would feel like it was you went in a time machine and it was 1961. And it, it, that's when it was the election or whatever. And I want we what, what we want you to do is just imagine and talk as if it was that moment. So like if you're talking about it, talk about like, oh, you know, what do you think? Do you think Kennedy's going to, you know, uh, beat Nixon? And why do you not like Nixon? And uh, mm-hmm. as if it was 1961, everything. Right. And they left them for three months. They, they, they did this experiment when those people came out. Massively improvement on the way they looked, the way they felt, everything that they could measure, that they compared it with all of them was dramatically improved. Because it was their mind telling their body. When you start, when your mind starts telling your body that you're old, mm-hmm. what do you think your body's going to do? Again, mm-hmm. thoughts, feelings, reactions, and and result. Mm-hmm. And and I, I think that's kind of what you're saying here is that you first stretching your lifestyle starts with your mind, and and there is not there's no limit to what anyone can do in the United States, regardless of their circumstances, Amen. where they live. Mm-hmm. Whether they're female, gay, black, straight, tall, short, it doesn't matter. I mean, look broke. at broke. Doesn't broke. matter. You don't have it doesn't a matter. Your name. What this is what matters, and I cannot. This is a pet peeve of mine. Complainers, people who want to be a victim and make up like the reason that they don't have something, you just fill in the blank. They grew up in right. a poor neighborhood. They couldn't do this. Or like, 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 okay, though all of those things are true. What are you mm-hmm. gonna do about it? What are you going to do about it is what it says. And that's kind of what we're talking about here is like, okay, you're at an hour of your life. Mm-hmm. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Because the world is not going to do it for you and nor should you expect it to do it for you. You know, I, I just, I think we're at a point in our lives, Randall, I know you're younger than I am yes. and you're amazing, by the way. That's another amazing. Okay. Thing. You got one more, just one more. <laughs> You'll meet the quota. <laughs> he makes me sign these goofy contracts. No, uh, no <laughs> hey, he's, he's, he's still got a couple of handsomes left. <laughs> so I think we're at a point in our lives where we just have to learn to appreciate our health. We didn't understand those things when we were in our 20s or 30s, or at least I didn't. Took all those things for granted, our health, having our parents, um, having uh, our our wherewithal. I mean, we were still trying to figure out our direction. And I think when we get to our age, we understand so much more. We appreciate so much more. And that's why my life now excites me. I am, I recently, um, I had an interview this morning. I recently told someone I am, and and I don't mean this because I want you to pat me on the back. I am the happiest I've ever been in my entire life, personally at 51, the healthiest I feel like I look better now than I did when I was in my 20s. I just, I feel really good about things. Not I feel good because I can lift weights. Right. I feel good because I have an understanding. I'm instrumental. I'm methodical about the decisions that I make that affect me and people that I care about around me. And I'm. it was not an easy journey. And that's kind of what I want to talk about this whole idea of, enlightenment, if you will, or self-discovery. It's like, it's not always pretty to peel back the layers of the onion. Oh yeah. It's not always pretty. Yeah. (laughs) You can cry. I cry a lot. I'm a cry baby. When you peel some onions. It sounded (laughs) like there was another, it sounded like there was an, one more last amazing Randall inside of that whole thing. (laughs) you just said. (laughs) No, I mean, you know, I have so much respect for you and you are amazing, but 
your your other gift and and it's kind of now transcended and what I do is helping people discover what they're really truly good at because I really believe this. I learned this from a friend of mine named Larry who said he believes that everybody has three geniuses. Not geniuses in the idea of being brilliant, but geniuses in the idea of a skill set. We all have at least three things that we're super good at that we didn't have to practice that were super natural, right? Focus on those three skill sets. Focus on those three geniuses that are within you, that are within you. You will become so much more happier and, and clearer because you just went from taking something you were great at and you worked on it to become a genius at it, to become a pro at it, to become great at it. Like, why would I go pick up ice skating at 51? That's silly. I mean, if you want to do that, fantastic. But being in front of a camera, having conversation, facilitating interviews, inspiring people comes very, very natural to me. Like I don't, like you and I were talking about pre-chat, we were laughing about something else, like my computer, like we, it, this comes very, very natural for us. And for you, your gift is to help people understand what their true strengths are from a business marketing perspective and you strategize with them and you build these business strategies for them that are insanely creative because that comes very natural. You think like a marketer. I mean, that's the name of this show. I mean, you're brilliant at that. And that's what people need to understand that you need to hone in on the three geniuses that you have and run with it, like go with it. And you will realize that it's not work anymore. I enjoy doing these interviews. I love being in front of the camera. It's, it's, therapeutic for me to talk to people about inspirational things like you can do this. You can start working out at age 50 with Rochelle Baum. You can, she's had seven kids. You can start as a single mom with zero income and very little time doing Facebook live shows and monetize. Like there's all these things that I want to tell and reach out to millions of people and let them know you can do whatever you put your mind to. And I know that sounds right. old and cliche, but it's true. It's no, true. I mean, yeah, I always, I always say, you know, it's like when people refer to someone as being a genius, they usually, you know, math or, or some invention or something I'm like, yeah, but what about other people who do? I mean, it doesn't just mean that they have to do those things. They could be a genius, like you said, at interviewing people. They could be a genius at painting, at dancing, at rapping it. Well, I mean, there's just a mom. Endless. Yeah, yeah. Being, people being are a just mom. naturally maternal and amazing. Like, blow me. I mean, I think I'm a good mom, but I mean, the mom that cuts up the orange slices and takes them to soccer practice and passes them out and never looks like she's miserable, but you know, okay, that's in annoying. reality, she has. That's annoying. I'm what? just kidding. That's not annoying. The son's love... like, oh, mom, please. Okay. If you, if anyone out there watches the Goldberg, that's, <laughs> there you go right there. That is you. Randall Chestnut. You are, right. you're they giving the Goldberg dirt on Tony Rodriguez. I'm oh. a good Okay, I can mom. be oh, yeah. overprotective. Okay, I'm gonna admit I am not Miss Goldberg, and don't you dare start laughing because I'm gonna and take if, all those amazing back, Randall. Yeah, oh no, well, I got a brilliant in there too. I seen that one, so that was you a bonus. Are brilliant. You are um, one of the smartest people I know. <laughs> if anybody hasn't seen that show, you got to check. Oh it out. my gosh, he tells me that I'm like Miss Goldberg with my son. Yeah, he like takes him like to Jimbery <laughs> to buy his clothes, and he's going into the like fourth or fifth grade. I wanna, I, I wanted to really. Uh, jump off of something that you'd said. Mm -hmm. I believe that everyone out there, no matter who you are, you have something that someone out there that needs to know. They need to know that, you know, some, some mistake maybe that you've made that you can share with them that they won't have to make some mm -hmm. idea, some, something. And mm -hmm. it's something usually that people, someone would actually pay you for. I mean, who would have thought, I mean, let's, let's back up. 10, 15, let's, let's back up 20 years, right? 20 years in 1999 when we were worrying about, you know, the, the internet and the computer is going to crash as soon as it, it turns over to 2000, right? I oh, remember yeah. that. Y2K. Yeah, yeah, Y2K. Uh -huh. And then you think about back then, who would have thought that you could make millions of dollars having someone watch you play a video game? Who would have thought that a, a young person would be able to uh, make millions of dollars showing people how to make slime. Who would have thought that someone six years old reviewing toys could make $11 million? I mean, it's the Who would have thought that a, 
athletic company is going to reach out to a 51 year old and say, Hey, we want to pay you to wear our athletic clothes. Right. At 51. I'm not 21, not with the hot supermodel with the bam and the boom. I'm talking a 51 year old single mom who six or seven months ago had no zero followers on any social media platform. Right. So, and now, you know, that, that's a good jump off point. So I want you to, to kind of give us an idea, like, what are some of the things that you found yourself needing to do, you know, to, to transition from the old life that was good? That you enjoy doing that. I mean, you wouldn't have done it for 35 years. No, uh, that, I'm it's still involved. High, yeah, yeah. At a high level. What, mm -hmm. what were some tips that you could I mean, give? The tips are this. Look, you guys, um, especially for people who are not technically savvy um, like me, you need to be patient with yourself. I mean, Randall can attest to some really difficult moments where I was really frustrated. I'd never had a laptop or a, or a MacBook. I, I mean, I was just, I struggled from the technology aspect. So be patient with yourself. Google is your friend. Um, Google yeah. it, <laughs> Google yeah. it. Um, and, 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 and really learn your craft. If, if social media is something that really interests you, you can be completely inundated. You need to find the one area that you really, really would like to excel at and focus on that because you can spread yourself and I've done it, spread yourself so thin and you're trying to learn about Instagram and LinkedIn and Facebook and Twitter and Snapchat all at the same time and technology all at the same time. I mean, it's, it's insanity. So you need to focus. My advice would be to focus on one thing and really <laughs> learn your craft. Be patient with yourself. It's a learning process. And with every learning process comes its trials and tribulations, right? I mean, it's going to be right. good days and bad days. Um, and just and really understand what you were saying, Randall, about there's a niche for everyone. There's millions and millions of people out there who in that millions of people, there is an audience that wants to hear what you, Randall Chestnut, or what I, Tony Rodriguez, have to say. Because it's not that they, they want to get to know us. They want to get to know our experiences and they want to get to know our mental game because they see something positive. They say, hey, yeah, this 51 year old over here are what she's never had this and and so it's intriguing right so i i want to tell my people out there who are interested in doing this be patient find a great mentor uh like randall um amazing randall chestnut um there we go that's it Cold field. <laughs> um find a mentor find someone who is going to help facilitate and and calm your fears and and give you direction and guys here's the other thing this is a big newsflash it, and, it, and it, nothing comes for free. You know, gone are the days of bartering and hey, if you do my website, hey, I'll do your podcast or I'll come in and do. I mean, understand we're all in this to gain. This is not a hobby. Uh, we do this to monetize. We do this to live and it's our livelihood now. And so be very appreciative when people do sacrifice their time away from their family or do give you a free um, hour consultation over the phone. Um, be understanding that that costs that person money. I mean, I know what your hourly rate is, Randall, and you know what mine is, but so many times we get on the phone or even at an event and people are chatting us up for an hour. And the whole time I'm thinking to myself, you know, I need to get back, I need to edit videos, I need to get ready for another interview tomorrow or whatever. And I'm thinking to myself, work, 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 work. So be understanding to people who are in the business that they are giving you themselves for free, but be appreciative and understand that things come at a cost. Like you're gonna work with some of the best, but you're also gonna have to pay for their knowledge and, and for that. So be right. aware that there are gonna be some expenses at the beginning, some investments, be aware of that for sure. Right, you know, uh, I wanna point out something just a little bit that you said when you were talking about like, being on, you know, Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn, you know, trying to be good at all of them. You it, it, just picking one and being good at one. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's hundreds of millions of people on <laughs> so yeah. what, 800 million people on I, Instagram. I personally love I mean, Do you need you any know. more? Yeah. Hi, it's Facebook. So, if you're out there, I love you guys. Okay. There so you go. <laughs> um, I'll give you an example. Peng Jun, right? He mm -hmm. has two plus million uh, Facebook friends or likes on his Facebook page or followers yeah, yeah, in high engagement. You go to his YouTube, 11,000. 
So if someone engaged with him and went to his YouTube, they go, oh, he's got 11,000. You know, he's over here talking about making millions of dollars. Um, but, but then you go over his, his, his uh, Facebook and you go, oh, my God. Right. And this dude. Well, is you know what? Um, Omar thing. Marcos with Runway Houston asked me to um, interview Red Carpet for tomorrow's show. He's going to get back with me today and finalize that. And I was like, sure. He didn't look at my Instagram to see how many followers I had. He didn't look at my Facebook to see how many friends, how many likes, how many views. That's irrelevant. Right. What's relevant is when people are in your presence, Randall, how you make them feel. How do they feel when they leave you? Right. And he's like, Tony, I love your energy. So social media will only get you so much as far as engagement. But if you want a true brand ambassador that's going to be at these events, that's going to be at the social networking height of different right. events you need someone that people engage with when they meet they find them engaging and they find that they are really really organic and real and feel good that's that's what right. a true influencer is it's not how many ding 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 likes and follow uh -huh. me and subscribe i mean look at my so i might have 56 six subscribers i think on my youtube channel that i just started that's irrelevant i have people that pay me per episode of bubble talk and they Five get a return. I want to point. I want to point something out with that. Mm -hmm. um, so Simon Cow, right? Right. Everybody knows the American Idol got mm -hmm. talent. He has all these shows, and he's got them all over the world now. He's smart. He's smart because he wants to get the talent before everybody else recognizes that they are talented. So he created a platform where he could find these people and then sign them to a four, five, ten year agreement where he gets a portion of what they do. Right. Brilliant. Well, so, so he finds these people and we watch the show and then we fall in love with somebody who no one knew they just were, you know, uh, you know, like America's got talent. I mean, they're down. Mm -hmm. I mean, God, the people, the, the magician that's on there, like the slide of hand guy, like no one knew who this guy was. Now everybody knows who he was because of Simon Cal believed in him and signed him up. Right. So right. I say this, the people who are out there, people who are brands or businesses, or you're wanting to, you know, get to a point where people start, you know, paying you for your, you know, your audience and the attention that you get. Get them early. Recognize when someone is talented early on. Mm -hmm. You know, Gary Vee talks about this when he he did a, a time lapse of his YouTube channel when he had the wine library. If you don't know who Gary Vee is, the summary is his, his dad was a, a Russian immigrant. <laughs> You've been I'm just yeah, but, yeah but, uh, <laughs> his family came over. His dad owned a liquor store, you know, worked at a liquor store, then bought a liquor store. At 18, he turned the liquor store over to his father or to his son, Gary. It was making like three million. And after, you know, they paid all the bills, it was like 300 and then positive 300,000. And uh, he took it from three million to 65 million using YouTube. And, and he, he wrote a book about it. And then he wrote a book about it. And then, you know, the rest is history, as they say. But what the point, what he pointed out was no one knew who the hell he was. He, he just jumped on there. He showed how terrible it was. The lighting was bad. Everything about it was bad. And he would have one, two views, you know, and he did this time lapse. Oh, and he would show you how long he'd been doing it. You know, six months, a year, two years, three years, four years, you know, and it showed. And early on, it was like none, none, like really none. And he said, I was just cutting my chops, doing the work, doing the work, stay, knows. And now, of course, look where, he, look where he is now. So back up and you go watch his video and you could see that the person that he was then is exactly who he is now. Mm -hmm. Personality. Mm -hmm. you, when you watch that video, you go, you, you look at that and you go, wow, that guy's, that guy's, that guy's going to be awesome. You knew. Yeah, you, you know. You, you, just, you, just, you just know it. Mm -hmm. And had brands now, people want pay him millions of dollars to speak all over the world. And he has a huge agency and, you know, pretty much everybody and everybody in the hip hop culture for sure knows who he is. Oh, yeah. um, but imagine if you could have gotten him to agree to, you know, something early on. Right. What it would, what, what, you know, what your world would have looked like. So I, I, I said all of that to say, learn to recognize good talent early. And, and and commit to them and said, hey, look, so uh, so for example, like you, if a brand, you know, says, wow, I like her image, I like her energy. I, I know it's early on. You know, I'm not going to look at what she has now. I'm going to look at the potential. That's what VCs look at. What's the potential of this business? 
mm-hmm. that's what they're looking at you, you as a brand and how you're going to help them. They can get somebody re- that's going to be really big. You know, like a, let me imagine if somebody you could have gotten Oprah <laughs> early. Yeah. You know, or Ellen DeGeneres really? early. Uh, well, you know, and it's Kevin, a lot of these Kevin little Hart early. Oh yeah, Kevin's got a great story. Yeah. That, so I say I wanted to finish off with that, saying, "Hey, but, but be careful who you pass up on just because you're looking at vanity metrics. Look and see are they truly talented, and how you can uh, align with them and agree to get them early. Maybe you don't have to pay them because Kim Kardashian, 250 G's to get her to do a post, but maybe back when Paris Hilton first introduced her, you could have got her to do it for 250 bucks. <laughs> oh yeah, two thousand. Oh yeah, 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 for real, for sure." So, I, you know, I got off on a, a, a tent, but it's, That's okay. it's, just, it's just really wanting to point out that for, 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 for you as an individual to understand mm-hmm. that you need to, t- you need to know, recognize you, you're talented. D- those numbers don't mean anything early on. Just like you go on, you go on to interview auditions when actors and all those, they know they're talented. Sure. I think you just have to, again, it's that part of that self-discovery um, and people say, how are you living your best life at 51? I live my best life at 21. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. I yeah. am living. I'm, I'm living my best life now because I know what I'm capable of. I know what my strengths are. I know what my weaknesses are. Um, you have a better understanding of who you are. And I think that companies would be silly not to embrace people who are in their second phasers, what I call them, second phase of their life. They're much more reliable. We're much more business savvy. And they got we, money. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and and I just th- I just think that um, even for stretch your lifestyle with my brand, I'm already looking at influencers that I meet and I'm not even at that point. But through your mentorship and others that I have encountered in this last five months of doing this um, social media, I realize that there's a lot of um, noise. And above the noise is some true talent. And I, and because I've been working with dancers from the time they're five through age of 18. I see the kids who have charisma, the the kids who have potential, um, people who are just rock solid that I'm interested in potentially doing business with in the future. Like I'm, I'm opening my eyes and my ears to potential like that. And I think that's very important. See, Mm -hmm. people get too tunnel vision and it's all about me, me, me and what makes me look best. And, oh my gosh, I need this picture and I need these shoes. And I'm like, you're spending hours a day focusing on the wrong things. You need um, to focus on being an entrepreneur because you are a walking business. I am a walking business. My knowledge up here um, makes money out of, thin air. Like we talk about that Randall a lot. Um, so basically all of the years of knowledge that I have through all the different industries and all the different jobs that I've had have afforded me now to open up so many doors, so many doors in so many areas. And I think that people need to recognize that, that the second phasers, if you will, are really the true pioneers for, for the next phase of where business is going for sure. Right. Do you know, uh, do you, if you're, if you ever heard of the book, uh, catch me if you can, it's yeah. a Frank Abagnale, right? Mm-hmm. Well, when I was younger, my mom was in the banking business and he actually spoke at an event that, that, that I got to go and meet him. I was, wow. young. I, first of all, I was just fascinated. This guy would tell stories about, you know, how he, uh, you know, he, it Pan Am, how he got to fly all over the world pretending to be a pilot. And then he explained how he did it. And then, um, he talked about you know how he started out. His first his first con was his father was an oil exec, and his father gave him a credit. Uh, he bought him a car, and then he gave him an Exxon credit card. Right? Mm-hmm. There is a there is an end to this story. Okay, <laughs> okay. I'm but curious because I have one that just started driving. Yeah. You got me really nervous. Unless you get him an Exxon credit card, so he got I the credit mean, card. He right? has a credit card. <laughs> But he was like, okay, so I can only buy things at the gas station with this, like gas or fuel and, you know, batteries and tires. But, you know, what about when I want to get, you know, go out on a date with a girl? So what he did is he went to the, you know, the owner of the gas station. He said, hey, how much are those tires? He goes, you know, $200. He said, I tell you what, you charge me for those tires and then just give me $100 cash. And he started doing that, right? His dad, you know, he was an oil exec, so he wasn't paying attention to the credit card. So what he was doing is just going to these people 
and and then just saying, hey, charge me for a battery and just give me half of what um, you're going to get for the battery cash. So the two hundred dollar, they would charge two hundred and only have to give out a hundred in cash, not even give them the tires. Um, so, you know, that I thought that was, you know, fascinating, like just this guy telling these great stories. But it, and later on, I watched the movie. I think Leonardo was that was. The, yeah. But, and, Leonardo DiCaprio. You know, mm -hmm. Some of the stories that they told, they told a little different than he did. So I take it that he actually told the true story. It's a really good movie, too, by the way. Yeah. yeah. And, and a lot of the stuff he did was just amazing. But one of the things he's in the movie that was really cool was when Leonardo was he was talking to his dad. Uh huh. And his dad was telling him a story about uh, the rat who fell into the uh, the milk jug. And he said that rat fell into that milk jug and there's no way to get there was no way he was going to get out of that milk jug. And he just kept trying. He kept trying and he kept trying. He kept you know, splashing about and unknowing to him as he was doing that, the milk started to curl. And it eventually it turned into a butter, I believe it was. Mm -hmm, or, mm -hmm. And he was able to then have a hard surface and crawl out of the milk jug. And his reason for telling him that was, hey, you're in the beginning, you know, you, you, you can either decide to drown or you can just keep churning that milk till it turns to butter and then get to the top. And I think that's what you what we all no matter what it is we decide to do in life. It's work. It's going to be work. It may not be physical work. It may be more mental work. It may ask you to change, which is very difficult for us to do, especially the older you get, you get set in your ways. Mm -hmm. But know that none of that is true. All of that stuff that your brain tells you is not even true. What's going to happen? Almost rarely, 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 if ever, the thing that you create in your mind ever happens that way. Right. I think that's no. great advice. I mean, that's, I would like to tell people that too, to be consistent. Yeah. Like, don't let a day go by that that you don't, in some way, some form or fashion, um, work towards your goal and to stay really focused. And I, I did mention this earlier. Um, I had to make some really tough decisions this past year. Um, <laughs> you know, I ended some friendships that were very important to me. Um, I, you, it, it's unfortunate, but you have to make decisions um, when you feel like there's just too much negativity or too much drama or to just right. surround yourself with like-minded individuals, surround yourself with people who are positive, surround yourself with people who are truly, truly supportive of what you're doing. And I, and I mentioned this yesterday um, on Bubble Talk, the show, I had some designers, young designers, young creative, brilliant minds, and some friends of mine who came to support the, and watch the show be filmed. And I, <laughs> and I just hugged them. And I just gave him a hug and I said, you guys, I just want to tell you, this is what life is really about. It's about really supporting one another and encouraging women, men, children to, to go and just really do what is true, what they're truly inspired and supposed to be doing. Like that for me is so important. And, and that's why shows like yours, I learned so much about marketing from you, but I also think that platforms like Be Live and Facebook um, do have a tremendous amount of good that come out of it. That people, I get the naysayers, right? You know, I don't right. do social media. I don't know why you want to do that. And, you know, I had a girlfriend invite me um, to, on a trip and she's like, you can come, but you have to leave your social media. I was like, what? That is, that's just a negative and that's draining for me. I'm sorry. This is my livelihood. This is what I do. It's what I enjoy doing. You know, I, I think there is, has to find, find a happy medium uh, and and have some life and not let it absorb you because it can. But um, but I just think people need to embrace the positive and the good that comes from social media and comes from these type of platforms like Facebook Lives. Right. I mean, no matter what you do in life, there's always a pause, a pros and a cons to everything that you do in life. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a pro to you getting in a car and driving to where the grocery store to buy groceries. The pros is that you get there quicker. The con is that you could get killed in an accident and it totally not be your fault. I mean, so it, it, like you, everything in life is going to have a, a side that's the, you know, the yin and the yang. So right. I, I, you know, what do you do? So, so, so here's my, my advice for 50 year olds real quick, or people are pro quickly approaching 50. Take the risk, take the chance. Really, really find out what your genius is, what your skill set is that you really enjoy doing. 
because it doesn't feel like work when you really enjoy it and it's natural and you're happy doing it and the money will come. Be very consistent that and live your life from the inside out. I say that all the time. Like if you know your God given discernment, you know, in your gut, this doesn't feel right. Get out. If the situation doesn't feel right, stop it. If your life is in a going in a bad direction, change it. Like, you know, I don't, we don't have to teach you those things. We all have that discernment, that gut feeling, that guttural emotional feeling that tells us this has to stop. This cannot happen anymore. And you have to make some big changes and set the course in front of you so that you can have this amazing life. I'm not, I'm not talking rolling in the millions kind of life. I'm talking about the kind of life that you sleep well at night. You're happy with the people that you're spending time with. You're happy with the people that are around you and you're doing something that you truly, truly love to do. Take the chance. Right. Well, I mean, that's a good thing to end on, uh, you know, that mess, that message. And as always, I thank you for taking your time to come here and give me the most valuable thing you have. That's your time. You can buy other people's time, but you can't get any more of yours back. So I appreciate that. So if people wanted to connect with you, maybe, you know, get a little bit more detail. I mean, we got you know, 45 minutes. You're not going to learn everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, wh where would you, you know, you have okay. your own show. You can talk about that too. Sure. Um, you can reach me on Facebook at Bubble Talk, which is my Facebook live show. You can also join my Stretch Your Lifestyle. That's my closed group where we talk about um, fitness and being healthy and living a positive lifestyle. I put recipes and workouts and just it's a bunch of like minded individuals. Um, it's predominantly female. We do have some male members. But um, where we just talk about being healthy and being positive and very supportive of each other, you can also reach me on Instagram at Tony underscore Rodriguez one. Um, also Instagram, Bubble Talk Facebook Live or my YouTube channel, which is Tony Rodriguez Bubble Talk. And you can also private message me, DM me. Um, I just, you know, I'm I'm excited to have the opportunity, Randall. I appreciate it as always of all your support and having me. Um, on the show. And I wish your show much, much, much success. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Again, thank you for coming on. And for everyone who's watching, if you're not already, uh, go over to Facebook and click that like and then follow and see first. And then there's a little button at the bottom when you when you click on that, fo that follow that says uh, be, get notified when they go live. I mean, if you enjoy this, you know, we're, we're here at episode 19, only getting better, getting you know better guests, more interesting topics. So just go there and, and follow there. Um, if you uh, if you don't have that time, you, we do have a Think Like a Marketer podcast. You can go on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, all those um, and just listen to it in the car for your listening enjoyment. <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot about my podcast. Yeah. You yeah. reminded me. Well, there you go. Now they know. Bubble Talk Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I encourage you to search inside of yourself and say, hey, am I doing what I really want to do? And if you're not, well, take some time and figure out what it is you really want to do. And that's a hard question to ask. So you could start with thinking about what you don't want to do. So I want to I want to end on this message. To, 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 I want you to remember this. The price of everything is the amount of life you're willing to exchange for it. And I want to thank everyone for coming on and watching and commenting on the show today. And for those of you who are watching in the replay, uh, just put in the, uh, the comments there, replay. If you have some thoughts, uh, ideas, or any uh, feedback, myself and Tony will always uh, comment back on that. And again, thanks everyone for coming thank on you. today and have a great day. And you too, Tony. Thank you, Randall. You too. Bye guys.